cloud existed when I was in school, right? So Hotmail was around in 1995. Is there one particular technology challenge which you think uh, has been really solved well? How do you look at that data to, to get more insights, right? So that could actually help you make better decisions. Hi everybody, my name is Pradyot and I'm a product manager of Service Desk Plus at Zoho Corporation. Uh, I have with me Rajesh Ganeshan who is the Vice President of Zoho Corp and uh, he's been doing this for the last 22 years now. He likes coffee, football, tennis and enterprise IT management software. I'm not sure what exactly is the order of preference but uh, I'm glad that he's able to join us today. When I called him in for the fireside chat today without a fireside, he was super nice to accept the invitation. But uh, really wanted to talk to you a bit about how has IT changed over the last many years, mm -hmm. the kind of software we make and things like that. Uh, there is this new challenge on, or rather new meme really going on right. in social media, the 10 year challenge. Uh, let's do a 20 year challenge okay. of IT management software or IT in general. Right. What's, what's happened Rajesh? What did you see in the last 22 years? Before I start with that, thank you so much. Uh, coffee is definitely an interest, so, so are tennis and football. Right. But enterprise IT management enable all these interests, so that will always go first, right? right. Uh, in terms of the change that has happened in IT management or enterprise IT per se, we know, right, certain things age really well, certain things really do not. Right. And uh, I can personally say, uh, technology, so to say, in the last two decades has really, really aged well. It has its challenges, it has its problem. Mm -hmm. But what is fundamental has not changed. So 20 years ago, uh, you had technology, you had technology enabling businesses, right? So businesses could uh, basically try new business models, like reach higher goals, right? That is exactly what they use technology for. So you needed somebody who understood the business, their customers, what their model is. And then you also had an IT team enabling them achieve their goals, right? So that fundamental has not changed. Uh, and, and, and in that sense, the, the 20 year challenge in, in terms of IT, uh, it's, it's, it's a cliche, right? But the fundamentals I would say has not changed, but you still, businesses, enterprises still need to have the basic understanding of who they are, who their customers are, what their model really is. Right but they now really, really need a strong uh, uh, technology champions within their company to, to enable them achieve their goals, right? So when I say like uh, 20 years ago, uh, the technology options were very limited, right? right? So, and you were serving customers who were not really exposed to a lot of technology and that has changed, right? So how well you leverage technology, right? It's interesting you've uh, said that because from what uh, I gather from what you just said is uh, the people problem has always been there yeah. or everything which IT tries to do right. is always around really solving the issues which right. the employees or what exactly the core operations of an organization exactly. does. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really been the trend over the last many years. Right. And uh, so to say uh, what we've been building over the many, many years as well. Uh, is there one particular technology challenge which you think uh, has been really solved well mm -hmm. and does not exist anymore or it is not something which IT uh, teams or IT operations teams right. do not have to worry about, something right. which you've seen yeah. let's say 20 years ago, 10 years ago and yeah. does not exist uh, in its severity today? One of the things with having put 22 years at work and also having a lot of grey hair, right? Maybe the coffee. Maybe the coffee. Right. You tend to answer uh, mostly philosophically, right? And not the, the questions directly. What really changed, right? So you talked about a lot of uh, uh, options available in terms of technology, mm -hmm. but still how people go and consume the technology, right? So that's, that's pretty much what we are talking about. How best to know what technology to use for what purpose. Uh, this again goes back to the same fundamentals that I talked about, right? So we, we, we've talked about cloud for so long, right? So cloud existed when I was in school, right? So Hotmail was around in 1995. Uh, I first saw a mobile phone in India in 1997, right? So we had mobility, we had cloud, we had all the internet services, right? So pretty much the same scenario that what we have today, right? right. What really changed is, so you had the technology, but you also needed so many other enablers for not just the technology, but also the other components in the infrastructure to come together. So all of them make sense, right? So you don't see technology uh, uh, individually or independently, right? right? You have to always look at it from the context of 
what it is used for how it is beneficial right in a more holistic so, manner exactly exactly right so we don't have to like sort of uh, uh, get very excited about just the technology talk about a we get very excited any talk of blockchain is exciting right without it's, even understanding how it can actually help me or help my business or help my users right so even talking about something like artificial intelligence that exists that has existed for decades now right when i was in school like uh, i had textbooks talking about interesting ai systems that were designed 30 years before 1960s 1970s right so why are so many people talking about ai today it's it's not without reason also right what has happened in the last 5 years because technology has reached out to so many people so so much data has been generated like even in my own personal capacity or at my work or when i travel so so much data generated in all the functions and all the forms that we have now is the time when you look back at a as an enabler to to sort of uh, give you the value that you really need right so how do you look at that data to to get more insights right, right. so that could actually help you make better decisions right. or help you with making predictions which previously was not possible because you did not have this uh, 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 large enough data set so to say to work with right? right so now you have cloud enabling generation of all these data you have database technology that can actually retain so much data you have computing power that can actually process like process this volume of data and these co run complex algorithms right. now all of these technologies are coming together and so are people and right. so are their needs and so are their data everything coming together is enabling all this and this is how i see this particular thing it's, you know rajesh a lot of what you said about ai ml and uh, blockchain being around is kind of true because correct me if i'm wrong uh, but isn't blockchain a form of distributed systems or distributed architectures which yeah. which i kind of studied uh, in my textbooks so i'm sure we all did yeah. and uh, some of these technologies are also something which we have been working on and yeah. which we've implemented in our products and uh, across the corporation and managing right. engine and service disk plus and yes. various other products and 2018 has really been that year where a lot of us are actually coming to fruition right we've put in and introduced a lot of these technologies we've introduced zia uh, beta coming into service disk plus right. cloud and a lot of our ml uh, ml and ai uh, initiatives are coming into you know the launch right. so to say how does 2019 look like uh, 2018 was great 2019 even better uh I would agree with that, right? Because uh, as I was saying, uh, this is the time uh, sort of all these things are coming together. When I say all these things, not just the technology, our understanding of the possibilities of what technology can do, uh, the expectations from users, because they consume technology in their daily lives like never before. Like all of these things coming together makes us understand what customers really want, what problems we could really solve better, right? so i gave an example of artificial intelligence right so how uh, having a big data set with the right context could help you use technology better to solve particular problems same is the case with uh, your your bots right whether it's a voice bot or a chat bot text bot whatever you call to me personally i see them as a different form of user interface right so user interfaces have been evolving over the period of last 2 3 decades Uh, i see the bots as like one form of that evolution right but it enables a lot of interesting use cases right so how do you put these things together right so when i'm driving back from my work so a notification could come and like dictate me a task that i need to immediately take care of without taking my hands off my sight off i can just issue a command that could do my job immediately right how good that is right so exactly so this is what i'm talking about so and we understand this now the technology possibilities and what the users really want right and uh, this is exactly what we are building in 2019 and going forward and exciting times for both us and the problems that we could solve for the customers right you know uh, this is i think something which we've discussed a while back right. off camera Uh, a long while back is there is soon going to be a time where it technicians and it teams will have to take care of coffee machines light bulbs because they are all internet enabled right. and uh, you'll probably have to upgrade your firmware mm -hmm. before you switch on the light right. or drink your morning coffee yeah. 
as annoying as uh, it might get to wait for your morning coffee right. after the firmware upgrade. Yes. How is all of this really going to affect the average IT guy, the average IT person? How is it uh, that they should, you know, really be prepared or is it really going to affect too much of their work right away or uh, is there going to be a 10 year challenge 10 years later where they're going to talk about this or in short, like how do you really think uh, things are going to be for IT persons from here? Uh, this particular thing, right, or generally speaking, anything you can have, like you can look at a thing both ways, right? So you take a positive view of thing or a negative view of thing to me. So this is actually a, a, a very positive thing to happen to the, the people in the IT community, right? So because I see this as a great opportunity for them to move up the value chain, right? So it's, it's, it's okay to talk like they are taking care of the coffee machine, right? But, but ultimately what it is, is have so much, the, the, the IoT, right? Internet of things, everything connected. It's not just about the, the, the coffee being uh, dispensed. It's about how they understand the holistic picture, right? Which is the theme we are coming back to. It's not just that you, you put uh, televisions or coffee machines or copiers all around your, your, your infrastructure, but you also understand how they plug in, right? So one specific example is information security, right? You, you have your televisions with uh, uh, everything plugged in now, right? It has a camera, it has a speaker. So people can actually hack into the camera and really see eavesdrop into a confidential meeting that is going on, right? right? So this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say IT's value is going to go up because they have to not only understand how to, how to enable technology do things, but also understand the implications of how best to deliver technology holistically, right? right? So the times are only going to get a lot more interesting, a lot more challenging where See, because you also cannot cheat your users anymore because at home they're using the same devices internet enabled right so where it can actually make a difference is understanding what is happening in the behind the scenes and really making a difference in terms of uh, security in terms of uptime in terms of all the regulations that they have to comply to in terms of making sure insiders are not abusing such systems, right? right? So you can actually add on to all of this. So IT's role, IT's value, because of all these things coming in into the infrastructure is only going to get more interesting and they can obviously have an opportunity to add much more value than they are doing today. So IT is no longer just that backroom operations team uh, where people run to when something goes wrong. IT is now actually part of business process management. IT is now part of critical efficiency uh, drives where they kind of are stakeholders in how well a business is run, how well an enterprise is run uh, by some of the decisions they take, by some of the you know policies they roll out in their organization. So I think gone are the days where IT is considered to be just that backroom operations team. They are now as critical as probably any other business function. They've always been, it's just that nobody's really exactly. given them the credit for that. But now I think their importance is becoming uh, even more important. Yes. Right, so I think uh, interesting years ahead for the IT teams, interesting yeah. years ahead for us, yes. uh, for those of us building those right. products. And finally, Rajesh, a very happy new year. I know it's a little too late, yeah. but uh, the final most important question that I wanted to ask you is, yeah. what is the longest you've gone, or rather, when is the longest you've gone when you wished somebody a very happy new year? In my case, it was February of New Year. <laughs> <laughs> what is yours? I, I, I live in Tamil Nadu in India and our new year comes in the April of the English calendar. So uh -huh. I wish a lot of Tamil people happy new year on the month of April. So don't bother about that. Five months after that we have Diwali which is yeah. another thing. <laughs> I think we have a new year every Yeah, month. Chinese new year in February. Yeah. Like we can have a new year celebration every month, right? Right, I think that's yeah. probably one of the great things about where we work. Exactly. Thank you so much, Rajesh. My pleasure, Pradyut. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks. cheers.